So Joel Embiid is on the hot seat because the dude can't finish anything within 10 feet. And then it doesn't help him that Jaleel Okafor has been a monster this year, including 40 frickin' points against the Miami Heat, and the dude just looked unstoppable. Every single time I wanted to dump it down into the post with Jaleel, Miami had no answers, and no one's really had an answer for Jaleel. The guys won me over, and the idea of having him surrounded by 3 and D players on the perimeter might be the way to go, and trading Joel Embiid to get a guy like that it's a possibility, and one dude who fills the role of that is Avery Bradley, but for some reason he's on the Lakers because the Celtics had the brain fart of the century by trading him for Roy Hibbert? The hell is that, Danny Ainge? So could we actually trade for Bradley? Well, if we look at the guard situation for the Lakers, they got Russell, Bradley, Clarkson, Lou Williams, they got frickin' Chris Dunn. There's a lot of guys, and plus, their center situation is pretty much non-existent, so Joel Embiid could help him. So, Avery Bradley, you gonna be playing defense over in Philly? Well, not at the moment. Perhaps if I sweeten the pot just a little bit? Okay, um... I don't know if Avery Bradley's gonna happen, guys. Well, there's another dude who kind of fills the role, Rodney Hood of Utah, who's having a crap season overall, and not only that, but his, uh, shooting guard mate, Mr. Alec Burks, he's been pretty okay. So there's a chance that Burks would probably end up starting over Hood anyway. And Rodney, you already saw his shooting stats, and he can play some decent defense, although he can improve at the same time. Ish Smith and some garbage isn't enough just yet, but I can probably throw a little bit more in there. Nick Stauskas? Do I have to give up the mayor of Philadelphia? Well, here's the truth, y'all. As much as we like Nick, he's actually playing, like, total garbage. I mean, that's pretty ugly all around. And, uh, Ish Smith? I, g I think the Ish Smith reign in Philly is over. So who's going to be our starting point guard? Why, TJ McConnell, like I mentioned before, because he can actually shoot. And so now we have a legitimate shooting guard in Rodney Hood, someone who's, you know, already over 80 in terms of mid-range and three-point shots, can be someone who can stretch the floor, but be more of a scorer than Stauskas. His defense isn't bad, and guess what? We didn't even have to trade Joel Embiid to do it. So this is a hell of a move, in my opinion. Rip Nick Stauskas. So let's see how this game against Indiana goes with our new guy. Well... Jaleel Okafor is going to pick up right where he left off, bodying up Miles Turner. Miles and his weird hair don't have much of a chance on him. And then we'll try it out in the pick and roll as well. The Brandon Ingram Jaleel Okafor pick and roll. That could be definitely something. And like I mentioned before, teams have been having a hell of a hard time defending Jaleel all season. It doesn't change here. Just a one way trip right to the basket. However, this was a big problem for us in the first half. Couldn't hit a damn open shot, including Rodney Hood, who got the open three-pointer. Was this trade already a waste? Well, hold on, don't get ahead of yourself too quickly. He got himself open on a weird screen play here, dropped it right in. That's what I like to see from my guy Rodney Hood. I'm actually really surprised we didn't have to give up that much to actually get him. And we already spoke on before how Ish Smith couldn't score. Paul George is scoring like hell, though, because we can't defend him on the pick and roll. Okay, Joel. You're off the hook at the moment, so maybe you can win me over and I won't have to trade you later on. That does not help. I got him about as close as I possibly could. The hook shot, it just didn't happen. But look at this play from Rodney Hood. Stauskas wasn't making moves like that. Driving inside, finishing? Well, Stauskas had that one layup that made him look like a god, but that was about it. Fast forward it a bit to the third quarter. We got a deficit. We can't defend Paul George. So Jeremy Grant is entering the game, and we're actually going small right now. We have Brandon Ingram at the power forward slot. Listen, we're down 11 points. We got to get a little weird on him. Seth Curry's been playing well, another reason why I was able to give up Stauskas and Ingram right away. They got Jordan Hill on Brandon Ingram. That's not going to work. They're going to have to make an adjustment real quick. And then Jeremy, that defense, man. You're going to you're gonna find out in this game that Jeremy Grant, he's not the best shooter. But man, when he's on the floor... We're just a better team. Good things happen when he's in the game. And of course, I'm going to have him on Paul George here, so hopefully he plays some good defense. And um, I'm just using Brandon Ingram as a help defender because Jordan Hill ain't going to do nothing from out there. And Jeremy Grant. I mentioned the shooting isn't too good. He can run up and down the floor, dude. Look at that. Throws it down and the foul. Jeremy, listen, I know Covington is supposed to be the backup small forward, but you're going to see he's he does more in this game. Perhaps Jeremy should be really uh, the backup too. You see here he's on Paul George and look at this lateral quickness. PG had to pass the ball off and we didn't actually score there so there's no point in showing anything else. Look at this once again. Paul George, he's been killing us all game and my goodness that's beautiful. Jeremy, 
We got a new mayor of Philadelphia, and it's Jeremy Grant and his defense. And you saw there that Dirk was surrounded by Nerlens and Jeremy. I mean, that's just murderer's row at that point. And then Okafor had to dunk on Paul George. This is interesting. Even if Rodney Hood is not the one actually making an impact in this fourth quarter, freeing up some more space for Jeremy Grant on the wing, that's a beautiful thing. Now Dirk's at the free throw line, so you imagine he's going to make both of these. He actually only made one. At least I'm pretty sure he did, but I don't pay attention when I edit. And then... With us down three points, I just want to show you Jeremy Grant in the open floor one more time. That boy can fly. Listen, Jeremy's getting some more minutes from here on out. So, I mean, look, the intention of this was to have Rodney Hood be the scorer we needed at the two spot. And, I mean, he was pretty decent in this game. But look at this defense. I mean, he forced Paul George to pass the ball away. They missed that one. Now we have a chance to actually take the lead. Do you think we're actually going to win this game? Well, Brandon Ingram has a decent mismatch, but our new starter, McConnell, is open. Ooh, that's tough. That was a good shot. Maybe Seth Curry should have been in the game there, but I need TJ for his defense. And then this dude, who I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name, he makes that one. Three points. I don't like how this looks, but regardless if we win or lose this game, we've already learned a few things about this team, one of which is Jeremy Grant is the chosen one. So can they defend Jaleel? They're backing up on us, which you should probably do against him, and ooh boy. Dirk played just enough defense to alter that one. And then Brandon Ingram goes inside and misses whatever the hell that was. We lose to Indiana. But a few good things happened. Rodney Hood seemed like he can be more of a playmaker um, when it comes to scoring inside. But he also had five assists for us, which was good. Jeremy Grant really emerged as something. So, um, some interesting things. Hopefully Ish Smith and Nick Stauskas do well in Utah. Because I don't think they were really helping us win. Besides Stauskas' is like three amazing games. And here's the three-pointer with Hood just because I felt like showing it. Anyway. I'm out. Oh, and by the way, if you watched all the way to the end. Shout out to the black screen. I'm thinking about doing a Q&A here on YouTube. So, if you got any questions you want to ask me. Basketball related, non-basketball related, whatever the hell. Leave it in the comments section. And, um, well, I'll see it. So there you go. I'm out.